Ah, the weather was not in the plans. The Prime Minister is coming to dedicate the fort. Chief Organiser James had everything ready. The chairs, the outdoor stage and a small marquee inside the fort for the VIP luncheon. By the time the official guests began to arrive, even the old soldiers agreed. The weather was miserable. Claire, the Prime Minister's personal assistant, realised there was a problem. The has been cancelled, as has been the RYF Aircon concert. However, we are planning on, on holding a ceremony, albeit in perhaps in a bridge form, in this area, commencing at approximately 12.30. Beautiful weather. Welcome to Newcastle. Sunny Newcastle. Is that how you're concerned? I mean, that's obviously what you consider you know, yeah, has to go in the program right. and, uh, and yeah. what we can do reasonably within that space. Yeah. A hastily convened meeting of the key players quickly had a revised plan in place. The performers and invited guests waited patiently as the new arrangements were made. When all the dignitaries were in place, all that remained for James to do was to bring in the Prime Minister. gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Fort Scratchley on unfortunately uh, quite miserable weather conditions. My name is Chris Oxenbold and I will be the Master of Ceremonies for this dedication ceremony and we're very pleased that you could make it here today in such uh, conditions. I would now like to call upon Mr Ken McBride, an elder of the Awabakal people, to, a welcome, to provide a welcome to country. Wana kuya, yante, yamalong awabakal karua. Welcome everyone for coming together to the land of the awabakal here by the sea. Ladies and gentlemen, if you bear with me and listen to this quotation from Captain W. J. Harvey. The submarine apparently had drifted southwards because we saw a gun flash when Captain Watson said duck which we instinctively did. The shell missed the observation post and landed in Parnell Place. He then gave the forts two six-inch guns their range and bearing and ordered fire. His telephonist then reported, Fire Command says, Engage when ready, sir. Captain Watson said, Tell him I bloody well have. <laughs> this story is part of the scratchly battery log from the 8th of June 1942. It tells the story of the night war came to Newcastle, but more than that, it's an Australian story. From the urgent attention to duty to the larrikin humour under fire, this typifies our nation. The history of Fort Scratchley is the history of Newcastle. The history of the Hunter, ladies and gentlemen, it's the history of Australia. So Prime Minister, welcome to Newcastle. Thank you for being here. 
And can I, with great respect and great humility, thank you for your efforts and say, thanks, Cobber, thanks, mate, we're proud you're here. I'm delighted to have been able to come here and be associated with this very important occasion for Newcastle and the Hunter District. It's a reminder to all of us of just how close enemy fire came to this country. Indeed, it's one of the few areas in Australia where shells were fired in anger during World War II. And it is a remarkable thing that the shells that were sent back in a typically Australian responsive fashion uh, from Fort Scratchley is the only recorded event, occasion ever, of shells having been fired on enemy vessels from anywhere in Australia. And it is therefore a remarkable part of the military history and the general history of our nation. Newcastle has had its share of adversities over the last decade, but in typical Hunter fashion, it's fought back, it's reorganised itself, it's found new activities, it's found new industries, and there's a new spirit and a new hope in the local community. And I believe that the refurbishment of Fort Scratchley will just make a small but very important contribution to the great local spirit of the Hunter. And good luck to all of you, and thank you for having me. Loving God, have mercy on your people and open our hearts to peace and love. We commend to you all who have died for their country. Grant that Australia and all nations may continue to work for peace and justice. Bless us in your service and bless this fort to the memory of all service and ex-service personnel who have served Australia. Help the people of this land to ever seek the ways of righteousness and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I would now like to call upon the Lord Mayor, Councillor John Tate, and the President of the Fort Scratchley Historical Society, Mr Bill Hopkins, to come forward and join the Prime Minister in the unveiling of the plaque. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as the principal guests do depart, I would like you to, uh, I call upon you to uh, thank very much the Hunter Singers for their performance today and the members of the Royal Australian Air Force, Air Command Band. Uh, well, I don't even make it. I don't want to get everybody. Well, they're all in the country. I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to. Up this way. Up this way. Jesus, I can't see Hawke's Nest. You can. I can see Hawke's Nest. You can see it from here. Yeah. 
What a top day it was. And the PM thought it went off with quite a bang. At the end, John quietly thanked John for a day that went mm, just as planned. Ah, just another beautiful day in Newcastle.